What's going on guys? It's K-Dub here with another episode of Crypto Zombie. So on today's episode, we are focusing solely on the Ledger Nano X, which I just received today. I'm super pumped. I've been waiting for this for a long time. So today what we're going to do is we're going to do an overview. We're going to do an unboxing in the beginning, and then we're going to look into how to actually set your Ledger Nano X up, how to use Ledger Live, and then also how to use MyCrypto.com to send and receive Ethereum and ERC-20s. Also, if you guys haven't got a Ledger Nano X yet, I do have a referral link below. If you find value in this video, you're more than welcome to use that. It definitely helps the channel out, and I do appreciate it. And if there's any specific part of the video you just want to skip ahead to, maybe you've already seen something or you already know how to do something, I will have timestamps below in the description. So that being said, let's open this bad boy. So before we even get started, guys, I want to always remind you to order your ledgers directly from Ledger's website themselves. Never order this on the secondary market online, uh, just to be safe, guys, all right? So basically, this is the box that it comes in right here. You always want to make sure that it's totally sealed. No one's messed with uh, you know, any of the packaging or anything like that. So we're just going to go ahead and uh, open this on up over here. All right, so you can see this is definitely packaged a little bit different than the Ledger Nano S right off the bat. It looks like it has actually more of a, uh, a slide out. Now you can see right here, guys, I actually got the uh, Genesis Block Edition. Um, I was one of the first people to order, and if you did, you get the special uh, Genesis Block Edition. So you can see they got very, very nice packaging. Looks like they made it a little bit more of a, uh, a luxury uh, type item here. So here we go. I got my limited uh, thank you card for having the Genesis Edition. Here it is right here. This is what it looks like, guys. Okay. And then on the back, you can see I have my, my Genesis edition that I got, right? So um, if we open it up, we can see this is what it looks like right here. Obviously, it's a little heavier, a little heavier than the Ledger Nano S, a little bit more durable, right? So let's see what else is inside here. So if we open this up, and uh, nothing right there. So we have our contents. Oh, we have our cable. This is nice. This is actually a nice... Thick, look at this, braided cable. Look at that, guys. Very, very durable, okay? And then, obviously, we have our, um, probably for your recovery sheet right here. Oh, there's a bunch of recovery sheets, actually. So it looks like you get some stickers in the package as well. And then um, they have multiple recoveries in case you want to, you know, put different private keys on or, or you just, you know, you want to just completely swap it out or whatever. You have multiple backup keys. And always remember that when you write your keys down, do not store them on your phone. Don't take a picture. Always write them down by hand and store them in a place that is safe. So now that we've unboxed our Ledger Nano X, which is quite a beautiful hardware wallet, I must say, it's time to actually get it set up. So let's hop in and have a look at what you see when you first plug in the Ledger Nano X. So as you can see here, first you get a welcome screen, and then you click these. These are the two buttons right here, so you're going to want to click this right button, okay? So we click it. And now it says to download Ledger Live at ledger.com slash start, then press the right buttons. So basically what you're going to have to do is go to either ledger.com slash start, or if you're already over on the Ledger page, you could simply just go to the downloads, click on it, and as you can see, Ledger Live is the first available download. Also, don't forget that the Ledger Nano X works with Bluetooth, which means you can use it on not only your desktop, but also on your phone. They have a mobile application as well. That's pretty cool, but for today's purposes, we're just going to use the desktop version. So once you've downloaded that, you're going to want to scroll all the way to the right and click set up as new device. Now, if you've already been using a Ledger Nano S, you'll be very familiar with this. Whenever you want to accept a command, you just click both buttons at the exact same time, all right? So now you're gonna have to choose a pin code of four to eight digits. Obviously, I would suggest eight digits. The longer the code, the more difficult it is to guess. So I'm going to put a code in and then we'll be right back. So after that, you're going to be prompted to write down your recovery phase. So remember, we got these sheets earlier. Okay, this is your 24-word seed phrase. This essentially is your private keys. Please do not take a picture of this. Write it down with your hand. Do not store it on your computer. Do not put it anywhere where any hackers could find it, okay? So put it somewhere very safe. In fact, I would recommend potentially maybe making two copies and you know putting them in very separate locations just in case something happens to the first one. So once you set this up, you're going to have to actually install the apps on the ledger that you want to use. Ledger can hold a lot of different apps, a lot of different coins, but these do take up space. 
So obviously you have to install them as you're using them. You can see right here, they have tons of different blockchains, Ethereum, Bitcoin Cash, EOS, Litecoin, Stellar, Tron, IOTA, NEO, Zcash, a uh, whole bunch guys, a whole bunch, whatever it is that you're looking for, you'll probably find it on the ledger. But for today's purposes only, we're just going to install Bitcoin since it's probably one of the most popular. And then also Ethereum, since the majority of tokens out there are ERC20 standard, which means that you would need an Ethereum wallet to use them. So for that reason, we're going to install these two. So we'll go to install for Bitcoin. You see it says installing. Processing on the ledger. And there you go. Now you can see that the Bitcoin symbol is now showing up and it was not there before, okay? Now, we also want to install Ethereum for this example, okay? So we'll install Ethereum as well. Same thing. And it's processing again, and then there you go. Now you have Ethereum. Now just for fun, say you wanted to add another token, just so you can kind of see what it would look like. Um, you know, if you wanted to put NEO in, it would be the same thing. You just install NEO. Very, very simple, guys. Very easy process here. And it would process yet again. And there you go. Now we have NEO. All right, so now let's figure out how to actually send some coins to these addresses. We'll start with Bitcoin since that's probably the easiest. So what you're gonna wanna do is actually navigate to Bitcoin right here, double click and open it up. Application is ready, all right? So once you have the apps installed on your Ledger Nano X, you're gonna wanna actually add an account over here. So as you can see in the accounts, I've blocked out my other account just to sort of keep my information private. As you can tell though, we've been having a pretty good run. If you can tell by the chart, it's been a pretty incredible first few months. So I'm pretty happy over here. But that being said, you can see right here, you're gonna to wanna to go and create an account. And I made this and I named it Bitcoin Ledger Nano X. So we're gonna click on that. And it says no crypto assets yet. So obviously you're going to have to receive your first Bitcoin on this in order for it to show up. So essentially you're just going to go to receive and then you know the rest. If you've ever sent any crypto at this point, you'll just get an address that you could send it to. And then once you get that, then you're going to have your entire portfolio showing up and you can see it on the screen with all of your different coins. So remember, you're going to have to install the apps, not only on your ledger itself, but then also on your ledger live. But once you do, they will be synced with each other. So now you have to choose your wallet. Obviously you're using a ledger. So we're going to go over here and click ledger, and then we're going to click connect to ledger wallet. However, it doesn't seem to be connecting. Why is that? Did you forget to log out of your Bitcoin account? Go back into your ledger right here. You'll see, go scroll down by tapping, right? Quit. Oh, look, we're in Bitcoin. Let's scroll over to Ethereum. Double click application is ready. And now what you're going to have to do is go over to settings and you're gonna have to turn contract data allowed. Okay, you have to allow contract data and also display data as well. All right, so now that you have contract data and display data is allowed, we're going to go back over to here. And as you can see, we had a bit of a timeout. Let's try this again, continue, there you go. Now, as you can see, there's plenty of wallet addresses that, um, that, that Ledger uh, generates for you. Um, obviously, I have these blocked out because I do plan on using these. So um, yeah, but anyway, you can go and they generate, you know, as many, I mean, literally infinite amounts of accounts are generated for you. And the one thing that I just want to stress is that if you're new to this, this is not like a USB drive, okay? You're not keeping your actual crypto on here. Nothing is actually ever on here. It's all on the blockchain. So, you know, if you if you accidentally unplug this or something happens, don't freak out. Your coins aren't lost. This is just a key, right? It's a window to get into the blockchain, all right? So basically, here we go. I have nothing here whatsoever. So what are you going to do? Well, basically, let's open up the first wallet. Why not, right? So we're going to unlock it. And as you can see over here, there's absolutely nothing in my wallet whatsoever. So if you're familiar with Ethereum, pretty much all you have to do is just send and receive just like you normally would. You can adjust your gas fee over here if you want. I usually just keep it around 10 guay. It's, it's really, really cheap. It's only a few cents, okay? 
So this you would just treat like a normal Ethereum wallet, okay? So basically, long story short, the only difference between having the ledger and using just a mobile app or something like that is that when you go to send or receive right here, you can see currently we only have Ethereum, but if you wanted to receive it, Here's the address uh, above my head right here, which I obviously have blurred out again. And if you wanted to send it, you would just put the address in this field and then you would type in, you know, how much Ethereum you want to send. Obviously, I don't have any in the account right now. And if you had tokens, you would scroll down here and you would actually have a list of all of your tokens. Now, the thing I want to let you know is you need a little bit of Ethereum in your account or Ether in your account if you want to send a token. You can receive a token, but if you're going to want to send a token, you're going to need a little bit of Ethereum. So I know that's a bit of a pain, all right? But basically, long story short, you have to send some Ethereum and hold it in your wallet in order to also be able to send ERC-20 tokens. I know it's a little complicated, but that's what you have to do. So if you're sending a token here and it doesn't show up in the drop down menu, let me show you what you have to do. Essentially right here, it says scan for token balance or scan for tokens, right? So this is going to basically scan for all the tokens. Now, if you're, if you have a brand new token, let's say a token that just came out and, um, maybe it's not currently in the system yet, then you may have to add it manually. So while this is loading, I'm going to get that ready and show you how to add a manual token in case your token doesn't show up on this list. So if for some reason you get this message that says no tokens found, then that probably means that your token isn't, isn't in the database yet, right? They don't have it updated. So what you could do is you can actually click add a custom token, right? And you have to add the address, the decimals, the token, and et cetera, right? So where, where can you find this information? Well, my favorite place to go is fplorer, uh, dot io. Okay. So this is it right here. It's f Plorer.io. Basically, it's really simple. All you do is go over here. Now, you can also search other transactions. There's all different things you can do with this Explorer, but we're just trying to add a token today. So let's take Matic, for example, because Matic is a relatively new token, right, at the time of making this video. So if we go over here and we, and we look up Matic, look, you see right here, Matic token, ticker symbol, Matic. So we're going to click on that, okay? So basically, the most important thing that you're going to find right here is this. And this is the contract address. This is basically, rep it basically represents Matic token. So what we're going to do is copy this right here, okay? And then we're going to go back over to my crypto. And then we're going to add the address right here. And look at that. It actually filled in all the rest of the information for us on its own. So that was convenient. But if it didn't for some reason, as far as decimals and token symbol, you can obviously just come right over here and it says right here, decimal and uh, token symbol. Okay, so you can add it, but usually it tends to just add it on its own. So essentially, I would save that. Okay, and now you'd see it says zero Matic. But if you had a balance, you would now be able to see it. So don't freak out if you have tokens on there and you can't see it. They're there. You just haven't added the token to be able to visibly see it. But it is there. So don't freak out, okay? And now you'll notice from the drop-down menu, um, well, we don't have any Matic. But if we had Matic, um, you would now see an option to send Matic, okay? But we don't have any Matic, so we can't. Um, and always make sure that, like I said, you have a little bit of Ether if you want to send an ERC-20 token. So that's really it for the Ledger Nano X. It's not that complicated. It's extremely similar to the Ledger Nano S. So instead of making an entire video, uh, basically regurgitating all the information that's already out there on the internet, how to use the Ledger Nano S, I just wanted to give you guys a nice introduction to what it is. But if you are looking for more resources or you're still confused, I'm going to drop some really great tutorials on how to use the Ledger Nano S because like I said, they're virtually similar in design and functionality, all right? And also popping up above right now, I'm going to drop a tutorial on how to use the Ledger Nano on IDEX in case you're looking to trade some tokens on that decentralized exchange. And if you have any other questions, feel free to reach out to me, guys. My Telegram link is below. Also, it's on this YouTube channel itself. You could just go to my main page and you'll see that I'll have a link for my Telegram. If you're ever confused, join the community, reach out. There's plenty of people that'll help you get your ledger set up so that it'll be a lot easier for you to get started. I hope today's video helped you. And that being said, if you haven't had a chance to get subscribed to the channel. I put out videos every single day. Much appreciated. And if you don't have a Ledger Nano yet, feel free to use my referral link below. You don't have to, but it does help the channel out and I do appreciate it. So 
That being said, I want to say thank you so much for coming back to the channel. My name is K-Dub. This is Crypto Zombie. Until next time, stay crypto and peace out.